guys welcome to yet another video of code from scratch so so proud of you for showing up every single day consistency is very hard for me also i am managing two channels insta linkedin everything so it would mean so much to me if you could like motivate me by sharing the channel with your friends or motivating them also to start consistently practicing every single day with us i hope you're liking the content i am trying to take all the feedback i'm trying to clear all your doubts one by one open to all your feedback always Please do motivate me and each other by commenting, liking, sharing. It would mean a lot to me. Let's look at today's question. So it's very, very similar to yesterday's question, but there's a little change. And actually this question is asked in multiple ways. So I thought it is like something that we should cover because, you know, from this, you will uh, get the idea of how questions are tweaked a little bit and asked in the interviews. So for example, here the question is that minimum number in a sorted rotated array. So again, we have an array which was initially sorted rotated at some particular point. Okay. So for example, this is what we have. So sometimes the question can be that, you know, instead of returning the minimum number, return the number of rotations that have been done in the sorted array. So that actually means that, you know, we had a sorted array and now we are doing the rotations one by one. So what is the number of rotations that have happened to finally generate the array that is given to us? So that actually is same as returning the index of the minimum number. Sometimes we'll be asked to return the index. Sometimes we'll be asked to return the number itself. Sometimes we'll be asked to return the number of rotations. It's all the same question, which is the question that we are going to do today. So let's look at it. See, in the example given to us, the array is rotated once anti-clockwise. So the minimum element is at last index. So this once could be the answer, the number of rotations. Or in this particular question, we are asked the minimum number itself, not the index. So that is what we are going to return. So usually what we have to do, we start with, you know, calculating the lower and the higher point, and then we keep reducing the search space. Here, instead of the size of the array, we are given the lower and the high points itself. And here the expected time complexity is given to us order of log n and the expected auxiliary space is also given order of log n. Let's take this particular example to understand. Here you can see this is our array that we are considering. Our original array would have been 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It has been rotated around the pivot 10. So now our minimum element that we have to return as the answer over here is 1. So now let's make some observations to try and understand what we can use to you know come up with the solution. What does minimum element mean? Let's focus on that first. What does actually minimum element mean? It will be basically the only element in the array for which the previous element will be greater than the element itself, right? Because see, this part will always be sorted. This part will always be sorted. There will be only one element present where the previous element will be greater than the element itself. And that will be our answer. That is the minimum element that we have to return. So this is the observation number one. Why there will be only one element? Because in the question it is given to us that there was a sorted array which was rotated at one point. So there's only one minimum element that is possible. And for that particular element, the previous element will be greater than that element. So that is one observation. The second observation that we have is similar to, actually it is exactly same to what we did in the last question. So if you have not watched it, I recommend you to go watch it. But if you haven't, we will be covering it now also. So whenever we pick any particular element, we know that that element is going to divide the array into two parts. Now one part of the array will always be sorted and the other part of the array will not be sorted. Why? Because we have rotated the array around one point. So if the minimum element exists on right side, we know that the left side is sorted. So if this part would have been sorted, we know that the answer is on this side. So again, see, in the last question, when we were searching, we had to actually see that, okay, where our answer exists. But in this question, it's actually much simpler because whichever part is sorted, we know that our answer is going to exist in the not sorted part, in the other part. See, if we were not considering nine, if we were considering say two, we know that this part is sorted and this part is not sorted, right? So I, we know that the part that is not sorted, that is where our answer is going to happen. This is anyway sorted. So the, here the answer will not exist, right? We are looking for the point around which the uh, entire rotation happened, the minimum element, right? So this is what we are looking for one. So here 
our main catch is firstly our answer will exist in the part which is not sorted secondly our answer will be the only number for which the previous element will be greater than the number so to quickly revise it once say this is the array given to us so if we pick the middle element we know that okay this part looks sorted because this number is less than this number and we know that okay this number is not less than this number so okay so this part is sorted and this part is not sorted so our answer is not going to be here our answer is going to be here so we reduce our search space to this part now and we start searching over here we again take the middle point and we see whether this part is sorted or this part is sorted we know that the right part is sorted so now we reduce our search space to this part we again take the middle element and we see that okay this is the answer how is that the answer because the element is a smaller than the previous element right and this is the only element where that this happens so this is our answer so this was the entire concept of the question but there is one edge case so before moving ahead i want you to think about it yourself what is the edge case that is possible okay and now when i tell you you should tell me in the comments whether this is the edge case that you thought of or not because now we have done some questions now you should be able to think of edge cases yourself this concept building is fine we are doing this but in interviews build coming up with edge cases is extremely extremely important so i want you to think yourself and come up with edge cases not just me telling you because then it's not that useful as it will be when you yourself will come up with the cases okay so the edge case that i was talking about is that the minimum element is actually the first element itself see the if the array was 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 itself then we know that the first element itself is the minimum element and why is this a edge case because here what was the condition that we were taking for edge case that the previous element is greater than this element right but in this case there is no previous element for this element and what will happen whenever we take any middle point this left array will also be sorted and the right array will also be sorted so basically both the parts are sorted so that is why our first element itself becomes the minimum element and we can return from there itself see in the question it is given to us that the array was initially sorted and then we rotated now how many times it is rotated it is rotated at one point so here it is rotated at point 10 but see there are if we see like one time rotation we are moving one by one then see here we have rotated four terms right from the left side to the right side now say we keep rotating again and again around one point itself we can actually come up with the original array itself which is this right to understand again see it like this here we were given that okay rotation has happened now rotation has happened around which point here it is 10 here also it is 10 only but here our first element itself is a minimum element here our first element is in the middle right now in order to handle this case it is an edge case because whenever we take any middle element both left and the right parts will be sorted for sure okay before moving ahead with the code let's quickly revise what are the points that we noted first point that we noted was that our answer is going to be in the unsorted part right and what is the case for the minimum element that the previous element will be greater will be greater i apologize for my handwriting it's really weird to write on ipad but yeah so uh, the answer will be on the unsorted part and the minimum element will have previous element will be greater and also there is an edge case basically in that edge case our first element itself is the minimum element and when will this case happen when both the sides of the arrays will be sorted so whenever we take any element both sides will be sorted for this case right now let's start writing a code let's get to the code part now here low and high point is already given to us so let's just write a while loop so while low is less than or equal to the high point and let's calculate our mint value and how is that calculated i hope all of you know this now so low is low plus high minus low by 2 okay so this is how we have calculated the middle point so when do we have our answer first let's see when will mid be the answer and we can return it there itself so for that what is the condition that the previous element so array of mid minus 1 should be greater than array of mid so if that is the case then we know that we have our answer and we can just return 
what do we have to return we have to return the index or the element we have to return the minimum element so that is why we are going to return array of mid okay so this is when we have found our answer now when we have not found our answer we have to see whether the left part is sorted or whether the right part is sorted and our answer is going to be in the non-sorted part okay so when are we going to reduce our search space to left side or right side so let's see when the left side is not sorted we are going to move our search space to left side when the right side is not sorted we are going to move our search space to the right side when the left side will not be sorted if basically array of low is greater than array of mid then we know that our left side is not sorted so if it is not sorted that we know then our answer exists on that side so that is why what we are going to do we are going to move our high point to mid minus one okay now else if array of basically mid is greater than array of high that means our right side is not sorted so in that case what are we going to do we are going to move our search space to right side so for that we are going to do low equal to mid plus one okay now why have i written the else if condition and not just else so in the previous question we did that okay if one side is not sorted the other side will obviously be sorted right but here there is a case possible when both the sides are sorted for sure okay in that case our first element itself is the minimum element and that we have to return so if both the sides are sorted we know that the first element that we're dealing with itself is the answer so what do we do we just uh sorry else return basically array of flow okay so this is our code but we also have to have like a return statement outside so i'm just adding return minus one and again there is one edge case missing again before i tell you i want you to come up with it yourself have you thought about the case that i am missing if not think about it and once i tell you you tell me why did you miss it because we have discussed similar cases in the previous videos this is how you will learn to you know notice similar edge cases again and again so if you have not thought of it i want you to tell me in the comments why you think you missed it and if you have thought of it i want you to give yourself a pat on the back in the comments okay so here array of mid minus one i took if i am taking mid minus one we can go out of bounds so we have to make sure that if mid is equal to zero or array of mid minus one is greater than array of mid we return array of mid so what if say there was only one element or if the middle element turns out to be the zeroth element then there is no mid minus one if we do this we can go out of the bounds. so if this is the case we just return it and we do not check this condition at all right so let's try to compile it this is right let's try to submit it so we have passed all the test cases i hope you understood the question properly and i hope you understood the variations by which this question can be asked if you have any doubts let me know in the comments i will definitely pick it up and do show up tomorrow really excited to see you Ta -da.